I'm a developer at Adapt, and today I'm going to be looking at a CMS that I'm really excited about called Statamic. Uh, so I'm just going to go over a few highlights, including what Statamic is, uh, how it's built, what site building looks like, a little bit of content editing, and uh, at the end I'll give a quick nod to a couple advanced features that I think are really interesting. Um, this is my Statamic demo site that we're looking at right now. It's running locally on Laravel Ballet. And I just cloned this cool writings starter kit that you can get from the Statamic documentation. Uh, so Statamic is what the folks over there call a flat first CMS. And that just means that out of the box, there is no database. Your content is stored in markdown files. This lets you do really uh, interesting things, um, storing your content in version control. Uh, it lets you um, Potentially set up a, a staging site if you want to uh, do all make all your content changes on a staging site, um, get everything correct, uh, commit that uh, that content to version control, and then push it all to production. That's something that you can do with this. Um, deploying between environments is really easy. Uh, getting set up as a uh, as a developer, getting a, a local site set up is really simple. If I come over here and look at the database, or sorry, the code base, uh, you can see that I have this content directory um, and that contains all the content for this demo site. So if I go look at the collections, I have articles and I have pages uh, and that all exists here in my repository. Uh, you can also see that it's not necessarily just one big blob of HTML, uh, it does have, um, uh, structured content, structured data in here. So I'm able to create fields in uh, the static control panel and uh, and edit content that way. So uh, it's really got a lot of power while also being really simple. So if I'm come back to this demo site, I'm going to show you a little bit of what it looks like to do some site building Statamic. I'm over here logged in as a super user, which gives me permission to uh, create blueprints, create field sets, uh, and add fields to different content types. So I'm going to just show you what that looks like real quick in this blueprints section. Uh, you can see that there are multiple blueprints for the articles content type um, or collection type, I guess I, sh I should say, uh, which would be analogous to a, a content type in Drupal or a post type in WordPress. Um, but we have multiple blueprints. Uh, I'm going to edit this freeform article blueprint that I created. And let's take a look at what that looks like. Uh, so I'm coming over here. You can see that there are already a few, uh, a few fields added to this content type. Um, we have some, uh, some fields in the sidebar, including a date. Uh, maybe that's a published date. Uh, we have topics, a slug title and we have this uh, this interesting field type called a bard which is kind of a mix between um, structured content and unstructured content uh, but we'll look at what that is a little bit later for now I'm just going to create a new field and we'll maybe create an author field uh, and when I click create field you can see that there are quite a few field types out of the box in Statamic so there's really a lot that you can do uh, without having to install any extra software, uh, any extra plugins, nothing like that. Uh, this all comes straight out of the box, uh, so it's pretty powerful. For now, I'm just going to create a user field, uh, and this is going to let me um, reference a user in my content. I'm going to call it the author field, and just click finish. Actually, you know what? I would like that to be a type ahead field. And then I'm going to take this field and I'm going to put it right before this barred, this barred field. And I'll come up here and I'll save that. And that's it. I've added that author field to this freeform article blueprint. Uh, so let's go take a look at what uh, editing an article looks like and, and see what that field looks like in our article. Uh, I'm going to create a new entry and I'm just going to create the freeform article type. And so you can see that here we have uh, we have this author field. If I start typing in there, I should have uh, an author that I can select. So I'll do that. Uh, that's great. 
um, I will just add some kind of random random text to the title as an entry. Uh, we can see that the slug updates automatically and that we have a default date of today. Um, and it's tough to see beyond my face, but there is a topic field over in this sidebar. Um, I do want to talk a little bit more about this barred type. And actually, I'm going to save, save this uh, for now. Um, and I just want to talk about this barred field type, which is really interesting. I think I mentioned it a little bit. It's a mix between structured content and unstructured content. So if we're looking at it right now, it looks like a pretty standard uh, text field. Um, I can enter some dummy content and maybe start, uh, you know, I'll, I'll change some things. I'll make, make some headlines. I'll make some things bold. Maybe I'll make something italic. And that's all great. And, you know, this is a pretty standard body field, which uh, uh, everybody would expect to have out of a CMS. What makes this interesting is that it also gives you this option of adding structured content. Uh, so if I click this little plus sign over here, I can, I've uh, created these uh, fields that, um, these field sets that uh, I've added to this barred field. And so I can add an accordion, an image, or a CTA banner. In this case, I'm just going to choose an image. And uh, that drops this image uh, field set right into the middle of our unstructured content. So I think this is really nice. This gives content editors a lot of control over uh, what they put in, an, in a piece of content. Uh, while also giving developers a lot of control over what the markup looks like, you know, that you're not just asking content editors to write, um, write markup or, or write HTML, uh, nothing like that. They can just choose an image. Uh, so I'll select an image. They can uh, give it any, any random caption and give it an attribution and we'll see this, uh, we'll see this added on the front end. Uh, and that is, uh, that's true of any of these field sets. Uh, I have, I have a custom markup on the front end that will be, uh, that will render each of these field sets within this article. Uh, so that's, that's really cool. Uh, let's actually take a look at what that looks like. So I'm gonna save this and publish it and I'm gonna just give it a live preview and we can see that, uh, this is what our article is going to look like. This is another really nice feature of Statomic, um, this live preview. We can see what it's going to look like on mobile uh, or tablet. Um, and all, all super simple, all out of the box. Um, that's, yeah, so really nice. Uh, and if I want to, you know, start changing things as, uh, as I'm looking at this live preview, it's going to respond to what I'm doing in the editor. So I'll just save and publish that. And that looks great. Um, just, uh, just a couple notes, uh, Statomic out of the box, uh, doesn't, doesn't really come with markup. If you want a markup, they do have those starter kits, uh, but that's uh, a plus in my mind, you get to bring your own, bring your own markup. You can really tightly control things. Um, and it, the developer experience is really nice. Um, and yeah, it's, it's something that I, that I really, really love about this CMS. Uh, a couple of interesting, uh, advanced features of Statomic because it's flat first, uh, they can do things like in the pro, uh, the pro version of Statomic. Uh, which is is relatively cheap, uh, but the pro version comes with a Git integration. Um, this means that you can have a staging site or or a production site, whatever you have. Um, you can edit content, and as you save the content, uh, Statomic will uh, catch that catch that event and commit your changes to version control. And you can even push those changes back to a master repository. Uh, so this is uh, a way that you can keep your content and your repository up to date um, and, you know, make deployments from a staging site to a production site. Super simple. Uh, this is, uh, it also 
uh, keeps your content safe. Uh, you're committing it to version control. You're pushing it to a repository. And uh, you know you don't need necessarily a, a database backup. You have everything living in version control. Uh, so that's that's a really uh, really cool thing that you can do with that Git integration. Uh, second, Statomic is called flat first because it has an option to swap out the data storage. So this means that if you don't like having your content in a Markdown file, or if uh, maybe that's you, you have a, a lot of content and your um, you're seeing some uh, potential performance issues. Uh, you can swap out your data storage mechanism and use whatever works for you. If you want to use a, a re relational database, a NoSQL database, um, that's something that you can do. So there's a lot to Statomic. I don't have a time to go through all of it, uh, but those are some of the highlights. If you're interested in it, I would encourage you to check it out at statomic.com or statomic.dev for their documentation.